Hello physics students. This video is prepared to help you with lesson three of unit two, your free fall acceleration laboratory. This is not a very intuitive lab and I hope that it will be helpful to see how it's put together and go through it step by step. On the first screen, they ask you a question about how you would design an experiment to measure free fall acceleration. So let's think about how we would measure free fall acceleration. Acceleration, by definition, is the change in velocity over time. Well, how can we measure velocity? Velocity is the change in displacement over time. So if we can measure how long it takes something to move a certain distance, then we can determine its velocity. And if we can see how that velocity is changing, then we can measure acceleration. So think about how you would measure something like that in a real world environment. The next screen asks you to develop a hypothesis. Now a hypothesis you've heard is an educated guess. Well what does that mean? The important word is that it's educated. Okay, So we have to know something about acceleration and we also have to know something about what the purpose of this lab is. In this lab, we're going to be comparing the acceleration due to gravity on Earth with the acceleration due to gravity on the Moon and on Mars. Well, what's different between the Earth, the Moon, and Mars, other than some kind of obvious things like life? Well, the big thing is that the Earth, the Moon, and Mars have different masses. Gravity is a result of mass. The Sun is extremely massive and all of the planets orbit around the Sun due to its gravitational pull. The Earth has a gravitational pull that keeps the Moon in its orbit. In fact, you have a gravitational pull too. It's just that your mass is so small compared to these very large bodies that it's, it's not even measurable. Not with, not to open it with things we can use to measure. So in this lab, we need to decide what's going to happen for our hypothesis. What's going to happen with the acceleration on Earth, the Moon, and Mars if they all have different masses and therefore different gravitational pulls? So think about what you think will happen in this lab. Now this little applet is what is used to take your measurements. Instead of using um, what we would use in a traditional physics classroom where you would use photo gates and drop a ball and it would start and stop a timer, we have a virtual way of doing that. And so in order to find acceleration, we need to know how the velocity of an object is changing over time. And in order to find the velocity of an object, we need to know the distance that that object moves in a particular period of time. So that's what this applet is used for. And so we're going to take a look at the applet now and see how it works and how you are to use it for this particular project. Here's the little applet here and hopefully you can see it. I need to move my screen over some if I can. Okay, I wanted you guys to be able to see this little red marker down here at the bottom. Okay, we're going to move that marker and this is the distance. Okay, the little blue ball up here, that's the object that we're going to drop. And here we have a timer and it's kind of hard to see, but this number right here by the cursor, that's the actual digital readout of your time and down here you can change the planet. Okay, So um, what we are going to do, or what they've asked us to do, is to find the distance that an object falls in a particular amount of time. So on that last screen it gives you times for Earth and it says first to find how far the object drops in 0.2 seconds. So I need to move this, I'm just going to take a guess, how far do I think this is gonna gonna fall in 0.2 seconds. Well, I'm gonna, I think it's going to fall half a meter in 0.2 seconds, so I'm going to hit the drop button. And you see the readout here is 0.31, so it took longer than I wanted. So I'm going to move this up and I'm going to repeat it. 
Now it's 0.27, so I'm going to move it up a little more. Try it again, 0.24. I'm going to get as close as I can to 0.2. There's 0.21. I wonder if I can get a little better. 0 0.21, 0 0.21. Okay, that's my, let's just pick that one. That's as close as maybe I'm going to be able to get. So the object falls 0.21 meters in 0.21 seconds. Okay, so here's why, where I have to begin inputting my data and I'm going to put it on a spreadsheet. So let's move to our spreadsheet where we can input our data. I have already set up this spreadsheet. I've made a, a section for Earth, a section for the Moon, and a section for Mars. I've put the times in that are given to me on the slide. And now I'm going to enter my distance. So I click on this square and I can type 0.21 and that's in meters, okay, for my distance that my object fell, okay? Now, I want to repeat this because we get more valid results if we repeat it. So I'm going to go and do it again and see if I get the same reading. So let's go back to our little dropper here. And I might even try to get it a little closer to that, too. Let's, let's scoot up a little bit there and let's try it again. Yeah, it's close. I can get it up one more. It's not that sensitive. Yep, at point two. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back and enter point two. All right, I'm going to repeat this process until I get all of my readings for Earth down here. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and collect my readings now for the moon. So I click on this, click on the moon, okay? And they want me for the moon, let me go back and see what they wanted. They want me to do 0.4 for the moon. So let's go and see if we can get 0.4. Um, let's see. Let's just put it right there, just try it. Oh my, that's not even close, is it? Oh, that's not very close. Wow. All right, 0.13. That that got me that got me pretty close, so let's go back to our Excel spreadsheet here and for this time, I'm going to put in 0.1 that was the distance that it fell in 0.4 seconds. Now, already I can see that the distance over time here is different on Earth than it is on the Moon. Things are falling much more slowly on the Moon. So that's going to come into play over here when I'm calculating the velocity. But I can already see that. Let's do a reading for Mars. So I change to Mars. Let's see what happens when I drop it here for Mars. Well, that takes 0.26. What time did they want for Mars? 0.3. Okay, let's try that. That was pretty close, really. Well, let's go back up here. Point three, point three four. Oh, that's close. There we go, point one seven. So I go back to my spreadsheet and input my data. Okay. So you're going to finish and complete your whole spreadsheet. Now, when we get over here to velocity, or let's do average. When I average things, I'm going to put a formula up here that's going to average my numbers. Okay, so we click on formulas, insert, and average is one that's already programmed in. So I'm going to go to statistical, up here to average. Oop, right there. Now, this, these little brackets right here, I'm going to tell it what cells I want averaged. 
okay? So I want to average my, um, all my distances, okay? So that means that um, cell C3, cell D3, and cell uh, E4, that's kind of covering it up there. We can't see the coordinates here. So cell C3, comma, D3, comma, E3. And it's going to average all those and give me an answer, if we're lucky. There we go. Okay, so now it's, it's done an average. And if I add another number in here, let's say we have one that's really wildly off. You can see how it changes my average. Okay, so it's going to calculate your average distance for you. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to, we're going to do velocity, but this time we don't have a formula that's already programmed for velocity. So we're going to enter that. We're going to put an equal sign. Okay. This is going to be for our, um, let's see, hang on. We're going to do a formula. And we are going to put it in here as equals. And then we're going to do velocity is going to be F which is our F3 value, our average, F3 divided by our time, which is going to be B3. And that is going to give us our formula for our acceleration, and there's our acceleration in the box. Now, I don't have to do this every time. If I have different distances in these boxes, all I have to do is highlight those and then I will see the calculation. So let me show you one that's done. Here's one that's already been done and you can see the velocities have already been calculated for you in the box. Now what about our acceleration? Well, Your formula for acceleration, all right, so let's add our formula here. We're going to do equals Okay, and when we rearrange our distance formula, we get two times um, our distance, which is going to be C3, two times, times C3, divided by the time squared. So that's going to be B. 3 squared. Okay, close it with a parentheses, hit the green check mark, and that's my acceleration, 10.5 meters per second squared. Now that we have all of our information input into our spreadsheet and we've had it calculate our velocity and our acceleration, we're ready to use another great feature of a spreadsheet program like this, we're going to use it to make a graph. All I need to do is highlight the fields that I want to graph. So if I want to make a velocity versus time graph, I'm going to highlight those fields, okay? And then I'm going to go up here to charts. I'm going to hit the scatter chart. I'm going to hit the marked scatter. And here's a graph that it's created for me. Now, if I look carefully at this graph, which I should always do to make sure it's doing exactly what I want, you'll see that what it's showing me is the velocity on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis, which is exactly what I wanted. But I want to label the axes, and the title is not not correct. So let's make those changes. In order to label the axes of my graph, I'm going to go up here to Chart Layout, I'm going to hit axis titles, axes titles here. My horizontal axis, I want the title below. And I'm just going to type in, that's my time. And we should always show units, so I'm going to put seconds. All right, so I'm good with that. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to type for my vertical. All right, and this is, in this particular graph, this is um, my velocity and my velocity is in meters per second. And up here, 
I'm going to give it a title. Oops, let's undo that. I didn't want to get rid of it. I just wanted to modify it. Okay, this is going to be a velocity versus time. And this is for the moon. Okay, that's all there is to it. You're going to create a graph for each one of those. And it will just, you can cut, paste, put it where you want to, and you don't have to draw all the graphs. Now that our data has been collected and organized and put into a spreadsheet, and we've uh, made our graphs as instructed in slide four um, of the lesson, now we need to evaluate our results. You can do this on your spreadsheet or you can just do it by hand. You're going to use the accepted value for free fall acceleration on Earth, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, and then uh, figure out the relative error. And it gives you your um, uh, formulas here in order to do that. Your experimental is what you got, and your accepted is what we know, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. So you can determine your absolute error and the relative error using these formulas. The last part of your lab, which is probably the most important part, is making is using your analysis to make a conclusion. Okay? This is where you take everything that you've done in your lab and write a paragraph that tells me about what you found, why you believe you found it, possible sources of error. This isn't a one or two sentence paragraph. This explains everything that you've done and why you believe you got what you got in your lab. Support everything with your data and other, any other information, your graphs, whatever. This is the important part of the lab, is explaining your conclusion. I hope that this has been helpful to you. Please contact me if you have any other questions about this lab or about your practice problems. I'm always uh, wanting to help you to be successful. Have a great day and enjoy doing your physics lab. Bye.